This is Andy Purewell for Boxing News. I'm joined by promoter Eddie Hearn here in Saudi Arabia. Eddie, Saturday night, this very arena. Mm. Nerves, excitement. How yeah, you unbelievable excitement. I mean, for so many different reasons. Like, obviously, every fight is a pure 50-50 fight. Maybe you could say 60-40 on whoever you favour in a fight. But So there's that. There's also the rivalry and the, the desperation for victory against Frank Warren. And there's also the team concept and the point scoring concept, which we've got to get our heads around and it's going to really unfold beautifully through the broadcast. And just looking at everyone, everyone who's walking around is like, who do you think is going to win? What, what's the scores? So tally up your scores. How's it going to play out? And, you know, the reality is, is anyone is capable of winning any fight by any means. And that's when you know you've got a great night. But one fight where people don't think it's 50 50 they actually favour your man quite heavily is Craig Richards and Willie Hutchinson. Really? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not so sure. I think it's a 60 40 for, for Craig, but you know, then others favour Philip Hergovic to beat Daniel Dubois. You know, others favour Hamza Shiraz to beat Ammo Williams. And I, I, don't, I don't agree with that either. But I think that everyone's capable. I mean, Willie, I see Craig as a favourite in that fight, but I certainly think Craig is an outstanding fighter. Uh, Willie even and you know I think on his night he's capable of, of beating many light heavyweights but I just feel like Craig will have the edge Just to ask you Eddie obviously there was a couple of videos circulating yesterday and suggestions that um, Willie had said something to mm. Craig Richards which was a bit unsavoury do you know anything about no, that? No I don't I mean there was they kind of went at it backstage and then they went back at it on the stage uh, up on the stage as well so no not aware of what's been said I'm sure a lot gets said you know and uh Sometimes you've got to obviously watch what you say, but no, not aware of, of the contents of that. What's it like working with Deontay Wilder? They're great. I mean, it's not, you know, we, we've been around each other all week. Haven't been having breakfast every morning and yeah. dinner every night, but we know what we've got to do. You know, he's here because I wanted him to be part of this event. I wanted him to captain the team. I think His Excellency, of course, wanted him to be part of the event as well. And I've given him that extra responsibility, that extra belief to say, it's down to you, mate, because whatever happens... I don't think we can ever be in a position going into that fight where we can't win this event. As captain, we've double points. Even if we have a stinker, he knocks out Zile Zhang, we still win, right? We might be in a position where if he wins by knockout, we win by a country mile, you know what I mean? So I love it. And he's a huge name, a huge personality, and he's a huge asset to this, this event. Do you feel like you kind of had to make him the captain on the night because he obviously isn't a matchroom fighter so he might not have that same team ethos if you will as yeah, the rest bit of, of your that, fighters a little bit of that but it's just more like I want to welcome you to the family you know this is matchroom is a family and when you're part of the team we'll do anything for you so it was more of a look you know I remember the conversation I was, it was actually I was in His Excellency's suite with Deontay and I wanted to say to him listen I know we've had our differences in the past but let's, let's get this victory. Let's work together, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, yeah, cool. And I said, and another thing, every team has a captain where the points are double. And you give that to your best fighter. You give it to the one you put the most trust in. You put it into the leader of people. And he's like, yeah. I said, and I want you to be my captain. And I said, you know, and I saw a reaction of, oh, cool. Wow, really? Oh, yeah. You know, and that's just... Uh, that, that's a little bit psychological for his benefit, but also he's, he's, he's a main man. Do you know what I mean? He's a serious dude, and I think he's a great skipper. He, for many people, is one of the like, serious players of a heavyweight division. Mm. He's just kind of maybe lost that spark a little bit, um, obviously going back to the Joseph Parker fight and that time away since Fury. Speaking to Malik Scott yesterday, he's adamant he's going to produce something special on Saturday night, but he also said if there was no injuries, no cuts, nothing like that, he thinks Deontay would jump at the chance to fight Anthony Joshua sure, at Wembley yeah. in September. For sure. You know, I think um, when you look at it, the key for AJ is to win the World Heavyweight Championship again. And that could come from the winner of Dubois against Hergovic. But at the same time, you know, we know that if Wilder looks spectacular, the world's going to be calling for that fight again. And it's a fight that definitely appeals to Anthony Joshua. It will be down to his excellency in all honesty. And I know that if Wilder looks sensational, His Excellency, the thought of Wilder Joshua at Wembley, I mean, 
you know, it's pretty big. But like I said, the focus is to win the World Heavyweight Championship. But Saturday will tell us everything we need to know. Is it hard not to think about that and maybe prioritise it a little bit more? Uh, no. You know, what will be will be. And after the fact on Saturday, it will spit out the answers. Nick Ball and Ray Ford's an interesting mm. one there, dear. Um, I was going to get your thoughts on kind of Ray making weight for this fight. Mm -hmm. I think it would be a benefit of going back into a camp so quickly as opposed to having time out. Yeah. But some people suggest he maybe looked a little frail at all this week. Um, he's, he's tight at the weight. I mean, there was a British Boxing Border Control check weight okay. yesterday, which he made 129 pounds. So he's three pounds over the limit, which is perfect, really. That's, that's quite difficult for a fighter, an international fighter, because you know, the reality is, is that is designed, and I say now, actually, I don't think that the British Boxing Border Control check weight is actually always the healthiest option for a fighter, because in the British Boxing Border Control's mind, and I get it, and I, I respect that, you know, the thought process behind this is the fighter will make that weight and then they're just three pounds away from making the weight and they'll gradually bring it down. We all know that's not the case. A fighter will work to make that check weight. Then they will rehydrate. Then they will have to come down again on Friday. Do you know what I mean? And any fighter that tells you they're not making weight for the check weight is telling porky pies. That's the reality. So for me, that can sometimes be more dangerous than doing it the other way. And, and you know, the rare, whether the British Boxing Border Control like it or not, some fighters will lose a considerable amount of weight in the last 24 hours. Some, scientifically, safely, by the way. Do you know what I mean? So it'd be interesting to see how the, the international fighters, like Ammo, like Ray, find that procedure. But Ray has had a great camp, and, you know, touch wood, everything's fine on the weight. He feels great. But it's a tough fight. And it's going to be a taxing fight. One thing I'll tell you is, physically and everything, he's in a much better place, Ray, than he was for the Komatov fight. Yep. And he was sensational in that fight. Your nemesis, Frank Warren. Yeah. You spent a lot of time around him this week. What's it been like? Good. You know, like, we've, when, when His Excellency brought us together, really for the press conference for Day of Reckoning, it was almost like a shake the hands and <laughs> go on then, I suppose we better just get on with it. And actually it's become, you know, dare I say, a friendship, you know, and... I've got a good relationship with George. Like, again, we're not like, we'd, we'd pop out, you know, we'd meet up for a coffee and a bit of lunch. We're not like going over each other's houses and the kids are having play dates. But at the same time, there's a respect amongst us. And we're all, I think the key is we're enjoying our work. I, I think, you know, Frank said earlier, and I feel the same, this is probably the most enjoyment I've had out of any stage of my career, bar maybe when we started and it was just wild and we didn't really know what we were doing, you know? So I feel a little bit invigorated. And I think boxing does, you know? Like, I just feel like we're getting so many great fights and great nights. It's actually having a positive effect on the ecosystem of boxing. We're selling more tickets for UK shows now. Our, our viewership numbers are better because people are excited about boxing again. And I think it's having a positive effect all around the world. You've said to me and you've said to numerous people in the past, you could see yourself maybe stepping away from the role you have when you reach kind of 50. Has this kind of resurgence, as you've just mentioned, and your kind of new love for boxing, shall we yeah. say, I think, changed I think, your mind at all? I think it would be a mistake to put a time frame on it because you never know how you're going to feel at the time. I've always said that 50 is a number that appeals to me. Not, not, not just boxing, like... I, you, for you, one thing I've learned is you, f you, you follow the path of your predecessors and your role models. And in my case, my dad is obviously, as most people, is the biggest hero. He's still going. He's 76 this year, still grafting away. I've always thought that that's what you've got to do. Do you know what I mean? That's what you do. And, that, and actually, I've also learned over the years that I don't have to be exactly the same as my dad. I can get his work ethic and his values great, but I'd actually like to do different kind of things with my life. However, I love boxing. Like, it is such a massive part of my life and nothing really makes me feel like boxing. So why would you walk away if you still feel like that? I just expected when I've said that in the past that by then I'll be so sick of it and just so sick of fucking sitting down with you. And like by then, how old are you now? I'm 27. Well, you'll be 32. I'm 45 this week, coming. Oh. Ne uh, next week. Happy next birthday, Saturday. next Thank week. Thank you, mate. See you. And um, 
I feel great. Like physically, I feel better than I've ever felt. From an enjoyment perspective, I'm enjoying it more than I've ever. So right now, if I feel like this at 50, no, nah, you're stuck with me. <laughs> but you know, I don't want to. I don't necessarily want to be 70, 80, 90, like sitting here doing interviews with you. I'd rather be on a beach, mate, having a nice bit of lunch. Well, Barham's never complained. Yeah, but you know, like, everyone's different. That, that's what I'm saying. For Bob, I admire that. But say when you get to that age and you still love it and you don't, why would you leave? I said that to Frank Warren recently. I said, how, long, how much longer are you going to do this? He's like, what do you mean? I love it. So when you feel that way, what's the point in walking away? Speaking of Frank, mm. uh, I saw an interview that he did with Umar earlier where obviously he was speaking about the Anthony Yard situation mm. and he mentioned that they was offered the Callum Smith fight for Wembley mm. as a representative of Callum. What can you tell me about that? Yeah, obviously yeah we, we wanted to make that fight. I mean, obviously, they have their issues with Anthony Yard and they've put a number of fights forward to him. One was... Boatsy, one was Callum Smith. Frank mentioned Bivol as well. Yeah, uh, that was yeah on the on the um, Arthur, when that fell Arthur. through. Yeah. So it doesn't seem like there's a solution. That's the business, and you know it's never great to see. But there's purse bids coming up, I believe. Yeah. But um, again, apparently Anthony's going to pull out <laughs> in three days' time. Really? It's, yeah. That's for, what was reported. What? Apparently, Anthony yeah. will pull out of the Boatsy purse bids. I don't know what he's going to do. You know, I mean. You've got three fights there that he hasn't taken. I don't know what the other fights are, but I know this is not, I don't know anything about the situation, but sometimes fighters get the wrong advice. They listen to the wrong people. Not saying that's that situation, but I've had it where fighters have just thrown their career away from where it could have gone to or it could have been because they listened to some idiot. So I don't know, I have nothing to do with that situation, but hopefully they can all resolve it. Hey, just a couple to end on. We've spoken briefly about Wembley. Take out Sheik says there's a press conference planned for June 25th. Mm. Are the fights kind of basically set in his own mind? Maybe not publicly, but you have a good idea of what will go ahead. Yeah, there's definitely... Um, we've been talking about the undercard now for Wembley for probably two months. I mean, you've got myself, George Warren and Frank, and you've got Spencer Brown. And we are kind of like... Th let's say three musketeers. like You know, like a just like a consultancy arm of his excellency who makes all the decisions and is the boss in this situation. And he will come to all of us and say, what have you got for Wembley? And we'll all turn up at a brainstorming meeting and say, well, we've got this, we've got this, we've got this. And he will choose which ones he likes. He, he has enough knowledge and he's definitely smart enough to know which fights suit that card. And I promise you, Wembley will be a night that will blow your mind. Is it likely you guys have the people who can bring Nao and Uwe, that superstar, away from Japan for that card? M not me, His Excellency. I mean, not, not, I, I don't, see, I don't think a Nuwe on that card is the right choice. You know, I don't think that that's going to captivate the UK. He, Nao and Uwe is a pound for pound great, but he's also got a very, very niche following of hardcore boxing fans in the UK. It's not like, you know, you could make great domestic fights that are going to drive fan bases from all over the country down to Wembley. But His Excellency is a massive fight fan and he, he will be a massive fan of Naira Inoue. And he looks at that pound for pound list and says, let's bring, yeah, let's get him, let's get him, let's get him. So, got to get the mix right. Final one, Usyk Fury 2, December 21st. Yeah, great, great fight, massive fight. I like the way they've given a little bit more time because sometimes you can announce October and in a month's time you've got to delay it again and that loses the momentum of the fight. So, December 21, huge fight, another huge night in the kingdom. Expect a different outcome? Probably not, but I hope so. Eddie, thank you. I'll see Cheers. you in the press conference.